I'm Darren McGrady, former chef to the Queen, Princess Diana, Prince William and Prince Harry and today I'm going to be making the roast chicken that I prepared for them at Kensington Palace. <music> All kids love roast chicken and I don't know whether it's the sort of tender meat in there or whether it's the crispy skin. What am I talking about? Of course I do. It's the crispy skin on the outside. That's what makes the perfect roast chicken. And so all you need for a perfect roast chicken is chicken thighs, season them with salt and then start laying them on a tray. Some people will say, you can use flour, dip them in flour, and spray them in oil, and add lots of other seasonings, marinate them, but you know what? The perfect chicken roasted is just chicken and salt. Put them onto a wire rack, spread them apart, While the chicken's in the oven, I'm going to start making the sides. And I'd often make mashed potatoes, a little gravy, and some shot corn for William and Harry. One of their favorites was mac and cheese. It's so easy to make at home, and all you need to put in there is butter and flour, and I've got some milk, a little cream, some cheddar cheese, some Parmesan cheese, and a pinch of salt. Don't tell me you still use those packet mixes at home. <laughs> Look at the ingredients on the side, all those additives and preservatives. It takes two minutes to make this sauce. And then I've cooked some pasta, some little elbow macaroni. It takes 10 minutes, bring it to the boil. And I'll fold that into my cheese sauce. Once the butter and the flour have all mixed together, I can add the milk. and the cream. And just keep boiling until they start to thicken. A pinch of salt. And as it starts to thicken, I can add my cheddar cheese. That's gonna thicken the sauce even more. But just keep stirring that. and I transfer to a spoon. And then the Parmesan. I let the sauce cook out for about 10, 15 minutes uh, just to open those starch granules and you don't get that floury taste. And then I've got my elbow macaroni that I just cooked a little earlier that I can just put into the sauce. I'll stir that in. And then I've got some mozzarella cheese. You know when you dig into that mac and cheese and the string all comes up? Oh, that's the best part. So a little mozzarella cheese in there too. So there's actually three cheese in this sauce. Once that's all mixed in, then I'm going to pour it into my dish. Oh, look at those three mozzarella already. A little cheese on top. And then to the oven. The kitchen smells amazing and the chicken's been in there for about 45 minutes, uh, almost an hour. And the mac and cheese has been in probably about 15, 20 minutes. It should be done now. Oh, it already it's looking absolutely incredible so be careful how you take it out because of that rack that's amazing oh the smell crispy chicken and that mac and cheese look at that that just looks incredible a little chicken on the plate. Maybe two pieces. 
and some mac and cheese. William and Harry loved this with corn, with shot corn. But when Nanny was in the house, mm -mm, she always insisted, the boys must eat their greens. And so she insisted that it was broccoli all the time. The boys, I guess like any boys, weren't huge fans of broccoli. But what she said was, when you do the broccoli, I want you to have one piece of broccoli with each piece of chicken. So the boys had to have the broccoli if they wanted the chicken. And of course the boys were big eaters, two, three, sometimes four pieces. That meant they got the broccoli. I remember Nanny coming out of the dining room afterwards and she said, well, they ate the broccoli. Oh, next time you do it, can you do bigger florets of broccoli, please? Winked at me and walked out. Nanny? Super healthy. How cheap is this dish to make at home? Perfect midweek dinner for the family. If you want a copy of my cookbook, The Royal Chef at Home, the link's in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more recipes and make this dish at home. It's incredible. See you again soon.